Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the feat Resilient. Resilient is short. It's simple. It's sweet. So it says, choose one ability score, you gain the following benefits. Increase the chosen ability score by one to a maximum of 20. It also says you gain proficiency in saving throws using the chosen ability. This is a... I think it has a little bit more interesting applications than I initially thought. I still don't think it's very good, and I'm not taking it that often. That's just, that is not to say I'm not ever, ever taking it. It's just, I really only want this on my sheet if I'm like a 17th level warlock, or a 17th level sorcerer, or, sorry, not sorcerer, 17th level wizard, or really, really top end specifically spellcaster is where i think i want resilient because sorcerer already has proficiency with constitution yeah um i was thinking druids yeah druids also make a lot of sense because you know they rely so heavily on concentration based uh magic as yeah as we've covered in nine ten videos so yeah for viewers at home what we're currently referencing is concentration whenever you take damage while you're concentrating on a spell um, you are forced to make a saving throw. And you know, hypothetically, going into the game, that you're going to be making a lot of that specific kind of saving throw. And that specific kind of saving throw is constitution. So if you want to be better at maintaining concentration on spells, there's Warcaster, which gives you a flat advantage on that. And you can stack on top of it Resilient. And Resilient gives you proficiency in constitution saving throws. You get plus one to your con score, which can turn an odd to an even, which is good. We like that. More HP is always great. But more importantly, it also lets you add like a plus five or plus six, whatever your proficiency bonus is at the tier that you pick this up to the saves you're making to maintain concentration on a very important spell. And especially as the damage starts to stack up a little bit higher and the DCs actually start to become relevant with um, concentration checks, you're going to see like it's it's a big boon to have. That being said, are there any other saves that I really want resilient for? And that's where I think it's a little bit more interesting. I don't know. What do you think, Bob? What saves other than Constitution for spellcasters? Uh, well, well, no, I wasn't thinking for spellcasters. I was thinking for anyone who wants to avoid... Uh, there's a lot of spells that uh, force uh, wisdom saves. Wisdom saves are pretty common. And a lot of those effects are pretty rough. Um, I'm going to take a feat for that, though? No, I'm not. I'm not going yeah, right? to take, take the Constitution one. That said, <laughs> that will be to my detriment. Um, sure. I think I, unlike you, I think these are, or especially the Constitution, is good, and you will definitely see some results from it, and that there will it will make or you know having this or not having this could make or break crucial points in the campaign. However, that's I don't know. It's kind of boring. That is definitely very boring. I I am on the record saying that I don't think saves, there's a much difference between them. And I stand by that statement when in terms of players casting saves on enemies. I don't think the save of a spell is a large determining factor of what spells you're deciding to put in your character sheet whenever you're looking, you're really looking about what the effect of the spell is. Where it differs is all saves aren't made equally and there are some saves that are made substantially more than others. The big three are Conwiz and Dex. Those are the three predominant saves that you see the most of in 5th edition and it's by like not a close margin. Like those three definitely take the cake for most effects that you care to have saves against. The strength's a little bit up there. It's like number four, I think. And then Int and Charisma are like bottom of the barrel. No, like in saves never happen. Charisma saves are like once in a blue moon to like a grateful presence, maybe, is what Christmas saves end up looking like. Now, I'm of the opinion that a lot of wisdom saves should be Christmas saves. I think Christmas saves are under underserviced in this game. But Resilient does give classes that don't have good saves access to a good save. I think that's going to matter most on very specific anyone trying to maintain concentration on spells. And beyond that, like, I don't, I don't want to spend a fee for something this boring. You're absolutely right. Like, this just, it's probably good to not get a plus four to my wisdom yeah. saves, plus five to my wisdom saves, but I just don't, I want something cool. Yeah, and I mean, you, you sound like me. That's not a good way to sound when you want to stay alive. Um, There's also a consideration, right, that this isn't a feat that is going to affect every encounter unless you pick con saves and are concentrating, right? Like, that's the one you know as a full caster or as any kind of caster that is concentrating on an important spell, you taking damage is going to happen, and that's going to make sure that constitu or constitution saving throws are occurring. 
Anytime you make a concentration save to maintain concentration on your spell, constitution saving throw. So that makes one of them guaranteed that you will use every encounter. That's where I think it by far is at its best. Yeah. After that, you're not making whiz saves every encounter. You're not making whiz saves. You're probably making whiz saves about once, twice an encounter, two encounters per adventure, maybe. In the upper tiers, a little bit more frequently. In the lower tiers, a lot less frequently. So there are amazing use cases for even the most common save types as far as like taking a feat that will affect every single encounter you're going into. Now, if you're also having a score from odd to even, that's really good. It's still going to be like a, yeah, I am I care about my wisdom on this, you know, bard or whatever, and I don't have whiz saves. I care about my decks on a character that doesn't have deck saves. That's where it also is a little, there's a little wrench into it. The ability score you bump has to be the save you pick. So classes that have and care about that score, let's say rogues, you would want to increase your decks. You already have deck saves. So it doesn't work the yeah, way you true. necessarily want to all the time, which is like a, mm, mm, I don't know. I don't know, Bob. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't take this on a rogue. Definitely not. Uh, I, I'm mainly fixed on a druid right now where I'm, when I'm I think thinking about probably it that it's, I agree that's probably where it finds its home best is on druids are the like the post child like big i have to maintain concentration on this, this is why i do kind of character and then you, you throw it out there or, and you you got to conjure wooden beings or mental elements or whatever and you don't lose concentration on that and it's a big deal right or wizards that you, you you plan on using a majority of concentration based spells yeah i mean wizards any full caster that fits that bill right like clerics yeah. can be the same way yeah but uh, i mean like we said before sorcerers don't need it yeah um so what do you think about, you know, I'm talking myself out of stuff again. I think as a full caster, I might take this now. I might even stack it on top of war caster. And I'll tell you why. There's enough fun things to do with spells that I don't necessarily need to add more spice with feats. There's also, I talk regularly about how bad spell sniper is. So there aren't a lot of feats for full casters in the game. This is kind of one of them, right? This is like a, well, if my option's taking another feat that gives me a bonus second level spell slot and first level spell slot, if I'm playing it like 11th level plus, that's not that exciting. So you're like, eh, I already have Warcaster. I, my int is maxed. I don't really care about anything else, but I have a 15 con or a 13 con. Yeah, sure. Let's grab resi- let's grab profici- or proficiency in that save type. Why not? That seems like where you would put it, right? Mm. It's... And I, you know, I even think it could be, it could be not as boring if you keep track of it. If, if every time you have to roll a con save to maintain your concentration, you you take note and say, if I didn't have resilient, I would have I would have failed that. Yeah. And then it's fun. We also so you mentioned druid as a place you really think this is going to get put, and yes, you could track it because that's something that you're allowed to do. I know players really <laughs> struggle to track anything. So I have a hunch that tracking when this makes you pass is not going to be on most people's mind. But we, Paladins are Wisdom Charisma. Those are their saves, which are, you know, Wisdom's pretty good. Charisma's not that great as a save type. And they also care about taking damage. So the con bump helps. Like you actively yeah. want a higher con score on your Paladins. I think that's probably a pretty good spot to put it to. Um, it gives you, they care about concentration. They want extra hit points. That seems like a home run. Yeah. yeah, that seems decent, right? I'm okay putting this on paladins. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm concentrating on all the time, but uh, you're going to concentrate on something probably. So yeah, sure, why not? We were just talking about bland or uh, brandish smite. Maybe this helps you maintain concentration on your brandishing smite if you miss. Oh, sorry, brandish uh, smite, not brandish. Brandon. Doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. I'm, That's true. It doesn't do anything. I'm so disillusioned. Good. The hiding no. rules of this game are garbage, and we're going to harp on about it in the next three videos, and everyone's going to know when we record these. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah. I I think Resilient ultimately is pretty boring, yet pretty powerful, and if you are already maxed out on the ability score that you're making attack rolls with or throwing saves at, you're probably happy to pick this up, assuming there's no other feats for your build, right? Like, I on think Paladins... you're happy to pick this up even before that. I mean... Yeah. Do you take this think over about, think, think about it. What? Do you take this over Warcaster? Over Warcaster? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I probably have a goal to take both of them. If I was going to take one of them, it's because I want to maintain my concentration. I, I plan on using concentration spells all the time. Mm-hmm. 
and I want both of them. And um, no, I forgot the point that I was trying to argue. Oh, sorry. You said you would take this regularly, right? No, you take it early I... for some reason. <laughs> ah, yes. You know, think about all right. You you cast your your big summon spell. You got your summon beast or whatever tearing things up, and then you get hit in the head, and the beasts are gone. Now, if you got hit in the head, but it didn't affect it, you you, you made your save. The beasts are still tearing stuff up. That's like just that one instance is is worth, uh, yeah, more more spell power, more uh, yeah, more damage you're dishing out. It definitely equates to more to more total output from your resources. That's definitely right. true. Um, we can also so let's look at it this way: proficiency bonus scales with the game, so it goes up by one. Advantage doesn't. Advantage is always a flat result. You're always taking the higher of two. So I would say Warcaster is the guy I would rather have earlier because Resilient is better later because it's added yeah. a larger quantity to my my result whenever I take it later than if I take it earlier. And we look at like if I can choose between Advantage or Warcaster when I have a plus two in your proficiency bonus, Warcaster is going to be on, on average adding a higher result than two because of advantage to the average res like the average roll for concentration, right? And that's normally enough to keep you above a 10, which is the DC you're looking to beat in the early tiers because you're not taking 20 or more damage in single instances in the mid tiers. Like it's not until the upper CR stuff are you taking like groupings of 30 damage. So when you start taking groupings of 30 damage, when you really want to have a robust like plus eight, plus nine to these kinds of saves. And that's, I think, probably where Resilient comes onto your sheet to say, okay, I can now actually maintain concentration on these effects through big instances of damage more reliably. And that's where I think Resilient probably says, okay, I don't want this early. I'm happier with this on my sheet. Again, when I've already maxed out my wisdom as a druid, but I already have Warcaster, it's like, you know, level 15. Yeah. I don't so... think you want it earlier than that. Eh, I, yeah, it depends on uh, what other options I'm looking at. What uh, I don't know, but I, I like what you said. Yeah, take Warcaster earlier, um, and this later. I probably will follow that chronology, but uh, I don't know how how much later I'll be waiting to take this. At Man, least four I levels. Really, I really did a, a 180 on this one during this I, video because I, I feel was like, like it was a 360 i thought you started up here and then you went down here and now you're back up here i didn't i, I never went down I, I guess i I started out thinking yeah it's powerful but boring and then i thought yeah i'm totally taking this anyway <laughs> great so just up just all all, right. all upside you'll have to see it i think this probably deserves a three it's never the first seat i'm taking but it does a serviceable job it, its existence is relevant there'll be characters that will go i finished my build sure resilient um, I'm going to bump that up to a four. I'm, uh, I think it's really good. I think uh, you will get some mileage out of it, even if it's a, a passive thing that you don't always appreciate happening. Uh, I recommend keeping track of that sort of thing. That's uh, So you'll feel better about having it. Um, or worse, if it turns out that you're failing them anyway, or passing them anyway. Yeah. This is this is why I liked, uh, what is it, Elven Accuracy? Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I still might be failing these. <laughs> which is why i'm taking this and warcaster gotcha you want insurance yeah but um yeah i'm not i'm not giving the full five because i don't think it's great across the board you you're not taking this for intelligence or strength or whatever uh like super great for spellcasters uh with con a little bit less for everybody else with whiz uh but yeah for what you need it for I think it'll get the job done. I would like to put it one last consideration. So there are spells in this game that don't care about your spell casting modifier that do take concentration. So like haste is a great example. I think if you're playing a character that is doing a lot of effects that have concentration that aren't attached to your spell casting ability modifier, there is a real argument to take this earlier in the game, just because you're saying, I don't really care that my, I, like plus one to my save DC, whenever I'm not making every spell use my spell save DC, isn't as relevant to me always having a concentration effect up that doesn't care about my spell save DC. In those instances, you might care about resilient a little bit more. It might be a little bit earlier. Just a thing to keep in mind. Track what spells, like you can play warlocks with 13 charismas and have a great time because you don't, you just don't take spells that use your spell save DC. And this is an example of this feat can go in some builds that play in that style. All right. Well, that was resilient. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think of the feed down in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.